I, w what I'll talk about over the next kind of half an hour, 40 minutes, and I'll, I'll leave some time at the end for questions, is how we at uh, Wolf Allens are approaching design um, and how that's kind of changed in recent times. And I'll also give you an example of, of the kind of work that we do. Um, this is going to be very different to a lot of the things that you see today, and that's deliberate. Um, I think one of the things that is particularly important to us is, is a kind of reminder of the craft, the care, and the kind of heart behind design. You'll have a lot of conversations over the next day or so about, about the head. Um, and I kind of am here to kind of provoke about the, the heart, I suppose. Um, so some of it might seem light, some of it might seem superficial, but it's all meant with, with strong intent. Um, it certainly isn't designed on a superficial level, it certainly isn't designed with light intent, and it, it's quite interesting seeing Nick's process, um, how similar, I suppose, a lot of the processes are that we go through on a, on a daily basis. Um, First of all, if you are to um, Google Christopher Moody, my name, um, you won't find anything to do with design. Um, you'll find this, which is a Jolly Roger for a 18th century pirate. Um, if I was to get a tattoo, I'd definitely get that. I think it looks absolutely awesome. It's a cracking piece of design. Um, what I like about that, though, is that actually, for, for me, there's, there's a little bit of similarity with, with being a, a designer nowadays and being a pirate in the 18th century. You get to travel w the world a lot. It's the second time that I've been in the various parts of Europe over the last two days. Um, you often kind of drink and carouse too much. Um, and you also have to have the kind of attitude to go out and take things that don't necessarily belong to you. Um, I think a designer's role, and I think this is particularly true from the agency perspective, and that's where obviously I'm coming from. I'm not coming from an internal perspective, I'm coming from an agency perspective. Um, the ability to go out and take responsibility, to take kind of the initiative to find different ways of working or to challenge um, conventional ways of working. Um, and to take advantage of all the opportunities that you know, new technology and new ways of working have to offer. Um, so if you take one thing away, I'm a pirate. Um, I'm also a very unreliable narrator. Um, if you want to find out genuinely about Wolf Ollins, go to the website. Um, it's far more reliable than I am. Um, what I'll give you is a very biased view from my perspective. Um, the jobs that I'll show you are only jobs that I've worked on. Um, the stories that I tell you are only from my perspective. Um, we are a reasonably large, small organization. Um, there's about just less than 200 of us. So we're based in London, um, San Francisco, and also in New York. Um, we're a, a mixed bunch. We call ourselves a creative consultancy. Um, we used to call ourselves a brand agency. Um, we haven't necessarily got a problem with the word brand, it's just that it doesn't necessarily describe how we work with clients. And I hope you see over the next few slides the way in which we approach our relationship with clients is, is kind of much more on a side-by-side on a -side level. Um, everybody says that, um, but we genuinely believe it's true. And I think the working processes that we have and the way in which we create expression work in particular is, is slightly different to potentially how people perceive an agency to work with, with clients. Um, I mentioned that we, we kind of work in, in terms of brand expression. The thing that I wanted to focus on today, just purely because you'll hear from probably much wiser people than me uh, in the area of product design or in service design, um, we obviously touch on those areas. The way in which we um, work is very much considering brand as a total experience. Um, a large part of that, I suppose, is the visual, the verbal kind of manifestation of that. Um, and we've stopped really referring to that as identity, and I, I really do not like the word corporate identity. It, it represents, I suppose, everything that is kind of not true about where we are today. It's very one-sided. It's very much about the organization at the expense of everybody else. Uh, and it doesn't seem to fit with the type of organizations we work with, nor with the type of work we're doing. So what we talk about is, is a brand's expression and the way that expression comes to life. 
Um, why I've been at, at Wolf Orleans for 13 years. So you either stay at a place for 13 years if you're incredibly lazy, um, or you get to work with interesting people on a daily basis. And, and that, for me, is the, the kind of you know, the important thing. Wolf Orleans have always had a spirit of being slightly kind of provocative and different. And I think we've been considering brand as expression for a very long time. We're 51 years young this year. Um, that example there is for a building company. Um, I think it's now just, just under 40 years old. Um, and that was a deliberate twist, and I think is representative of a type of work that we like to twist on a, on a visual heartfelt level, of a building company should be cold, it should be in Helvetica, it should be kind of stacked up and kind of rigid. And actually we said, no, Bovis in this case, needed to feel free because part of what they did was they built beautiful things. So hence the representation of the, the little bird. Um, and that was kind of thinking that was happening even in 40 years, years ago in the company. And I, I think we still got that kind of spirit and that heart. Um, I like this slide. I like Bowie. The reason why I suppose we, we still feel that we can be relevant in a world that's completely changing is that we change as an organization, so very much like a kind of football team. Over the course of you know, a couple of years, our squad will completely, completely change. We're, we've got that kind of Bowie principle that if you stand still for too long, you're, you're dead. Um, so we're constantly kind of pushing into different areas. Sometimes that means we kind of go off into areas that prove no kind of use, and then we come back. But we're, we're constantly changing, and, and the makeup of our teams are very, are very mixed very cross-discipline. Um, there is no, essentially, when it, we're recruiting a designer, there's no set um, kind of structure that we have in terms of exactly what we need um, from a job description. We, we kind of build it around how best to plug them into a team. The second part, I, I think, is the kind of Doctor Who part, is that I, I genuinely feel that the company kind of morphs every few years, um, and it, it, you can almost plot the changes of our organization against technology. Uh, you know, the way in which we've gone from kind of 2G up to 4G, at each different point, I can almost map the way in which we've changed. Um, I asked the guys in the office to put together a little video just to kind of give you a sense of what it feels like in there. Um, it, it just kind of gives you a mood of what the, what the office is like, the type of work we do, and the people that are in there. is I'll go into a couple of examples of, of kind of the backgrounds behind some of those stories um, and just explain to you kind of how we've, we've worked with the clients and also the type of work that we've, that we've done. Um, when we speak to our designers at the moment, we kind of remind them, and you'll, again, you'll see versions of this slide many times over the next few days, but um, th these are genuinely super exciting times to, 
to be a designer um, and to be whether it's a, a graphic designer, a service designer, a profit, product designer. Um, there will there will probably never be a time like this where everything's kind of the opportunity is so rich and so kind of um, amazing. Um, the opportunity, I suppose, is to make sure that you take advantage of that. Our conversation is often around the fact that we've got more platforms than ever before. We've got more technology. We've got more touch points. We've got more commentary than ever before. There's more people blogging and tweeting and having an opinion um, about design and about what they feel about design than, than we've, we've ever um, we've ever known. There's also many, many more options um, and many more ways of working and many more practices that we could follow, um, which is fantastic and all these things offer great opportunity. It also means that there's never been a better time to screw things up. There's never been a better time to produce really boring work. Because one of the things that we've realized, particularly, and you see when we start to talk about the idea of, of kind of a brand expression being a system, a kind of really rich system, is that systems often lead to things that you recognize because they're the path of le least resistance or they get down to the lowest common denominator. And I think our challenge as, as, as an agency and as a creative agency is to remember that everything requires also that kind of passion and that vibrancy and that ability to kind of just be different, maybe just because it, it needs to be different for the sake of being different. Um, it's, it's, a big, it's a big area and it's something that I suppose we're constantly kind of in internal debate around about how to take advantage of all these opportunities without kind of um, creating things that follow too much of a pattern. Without a shadow of a doubt though, we have shifted away from, and I don't think we were ever here, but I think the industry of branding is definitely was in an area of looking at being able to do a paint job over something. Without a shadow of a doubt now, you cannot do that. Experience is absolutely everything. If your experience isn't up to scratch, then no matter how you put that expression together, it will just mean nothing. So we, the way in which we're working with clients on a, on a kind of product and service level is getting ever more ingrained because really that's what we're bringing to life, that's what we're surfacing. And particularly with designers who are working on the expression work, the way in which they bring that to life, it has to be based around a, a true a true experience um, I don't know if you can see this but it's a very simplified diagram of kind of uh, I suppose it shows a little bit of the the stretch of, of where we've come from on the left hand side are, are your traditional identity elements um, and I think for many years brands have managed to survive on those alone the way in which we're increasingly working in, in language, and at the moment I've just recruited a, a brand new um, tone of voice specialist. The first thing that we're going to do is change his title uh, because tone of voice is from corporate identity world, um, and actually we need to create something which is much more about engaging people in conversation. Um, tone of voice and the way in which you use language, though, is incredibly important and just as much a responsibility of a graphic designer as it is for a product designer or service designer. Um, the bottom part, the kind of interaction, um, is, has obviously been integral for the last few years, but I think actually is increasingly becoming the way in which we enter projects. So normally we'd, we'd have, somebody would have knocked on our door and asked us to give them a new logo. Now they're asking us to help with the, with the, the UX or help with um, maybe some sort of behavioral icon that can help to tell a story in a much more joined up way. And then obviously on the right hand side is the area where we probably still need to do lots more work, the area of haptics, the area of kind of scent, currently working on a project where we're um, creating a very distinct scent for a, an area, which is a very peculiar job to work on. Um, but it's all part of a joined up experience and at the center of all this really is as opposed to in the corporate identity world where at the center was the organization, at the center is a human being and their heart and their, their kind of spirit. And for us it's really important that everything we do is, is built around that. Now this may not be rocket science to you guys, but often when we're in a boardroom or when we're talking to particularly marketing teams because they've been convinced by people like me for the last 50 years 
that actually it's all about consistency. It's all about kind of stamping things and making sure wherever you are, whether it's a phone or whether it's a box or whether it's a shop, it's got to have the same stamp on it. They, they, they're convinced about it, so we, we need to educate and we need to help um, people understand. I think that's actually something that probably doesn't happen enough um, because of the amount of times that we have to go in and how start this conversation from the very beginning, um, you'd, you'd be surprised. Um, in this new world, um, Huxley would have hated um, being used as, a, as an example in a, uh, in a branding point, um, but he's currently uh, consistent, so I'm going uh, to use him. But the idea that consistency is, is actually contrary to, to everything. I think he's completely true about what we do. And really, it's about creating a coherency, and that's very different. A coherency can have very different um, ways of bringing uh, things together, but ultimately, it forms one, one coherent whole. Um, what I, I was talking about the clients and the big clients we have conversations with. We are increasingly finding, though, that they're ever more sophisticated. They're ever more sophisticated because they've got incredibly smart internal teams and people working from the ground up. Um, and I think part of our job is to plug in um, with those teams and help surface some of the great things that are happening internally. As I say, I'm coming at this from a, an agency perspective. It's very different if you're working in, in, internally. But I often when we have conversations with, um, with design teams who work within an organization, their voice isn't heard loud enough. Um, um, finding ways to amplify that voice is really important. Um, but lots of really smart thinkers that we meet are, are working in this kind of this post-corporate world. Um, and there's clearly really new rules. I, I'm not, it's, it's quite weird, I'm not a massive fan of the, the Uber brand for lots of reasons. Um, what I am intrigued by is the way in which they have used um, brand expression and presence. Um, if you go to London on, on any sort of Saturday night, you'll see one of these. Um, this is technically branded Toyota, it's definitely branded Uber. Um, and it does nothing more than just having that presence. And the fact that you see that shape darting around London, and that shape is exactly the same shape that appears on your screen, that's, that's the branding of it. That's the kind of the, the expression of it. And there's something really interesting and kind of I think will happen more and more, the ability for big organizations to behave like pirates and kind of go out there and just take the things that they want to take and piece them together to make their brand. And that's completely new rules. And I think the, the traditional agencies are not prepared to, to work with that because we're so used to kind of a, a guideline structure or a very um, kind of working in isolation and then presenting back to the client. So that's why we think it's a really, really exciting time. And also the fact that any expression is is now never launched. Um, there's no such thing as a, a brand launch anymore. It kind of gets out in the world like gas. Every time something's created, it kind of creeps out a little bit, whether it's through Twitter or through you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram. Um, and actually, a brand expression is just software. It's just constantly upgrading and changing. And that's, again, something that we, uh, I suppose, are having to help educate very traditional large organizations to understand. Organizations like IBM get that straight away, but when you're working with a big multinational company, when you're working with a telecoms company that have worked in a very specific way for a very long period of time, it's actually quite big news for them. Um, one of the things we're most recognized for is the London 2012 Olympics. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it as much. Um, that, I think, does, though, pull together our attitude of, of not just standing out, um, but also standing for something. And, and the, the purpose behind the, the 2012 work was very much to make it feel like it was for everyone and everyone's Olympic work. And I suppose democratization and the, the opening up of um, expression and identity to a wider audience is something that runs through all our work. If you think back to that um, circular chart, one of the things that I found particularly interesting is actually, although there was a lot of conversation around the logo, um, that wasn't the thing necessarily that was the most potent for me. We can date and time that particular shot there just by the typography. Um, and almost that is, is the big win that came out 
for me. It, it was a very interesting project because the, the team was working on it um, five years before the event. So you're designing something for five years in the future and trying to imagine what that could be like as well. So that for me is the, the big resonant thing that came out of that particular piece of work. And I think more and more you're going to see other assets, other, other kind of traditional assets taking a more prominent role as almost a lead. Um, one of the, um, the projects that we've recently worked on is with a company we've worked with for a very long time ago, um, Oi in Brazil, through a mobile telecom brand. Um, they came to us um, after a good few years to say we'd like you to take what we, what we have and what you create for us and make it a little bit more resonant for our, our audience um, today. Um, and we, we came back with a piece of work which was virtually the same as what they already had. But we used the, um, the kind of market that they'd always had and have created a series of different interactions to kind of play with it on a speech level. So there are various kind of intervention points whereby the mark actually reacts to you and responds to you and changes depending on, on how you speak um, or, or when you, you talk to it. It's a very light touch, but it's kind of it's starting to show how other areas of that circle are coming in. Um, so really, I suppose we, we're, what we're saying is we put, we put users at the heart of every, every single thing that we do, um, and that's incredibly important to us now. Um, the main thing actually I was down to talk about today, and I've kind of expanded this out, was, was a piece of work we've done for um, Enel. Enel, a very large um, electricity organization, um, I think the world's third largest, uh, based in Italy. Um, they are a very interesting group of people because they're coming from a very traditional mindset. And actually within the organization, there's a real belief for change and a belief that they could be much more of a participatory brand, much more of an integrated brand, much more of a visually exciting brand. Um, and that's quite interesting coming from a company that's actually a, a utility. You know, should a utility have a, a presence and a, and a kind of uh, an excitement about it? Well, yeah, I think so, because the world kind of needs it. The world needs things that occasionally put a smile on your face. Um, and what we did with them is we, we, we created, I mean, today I'm only really talking about expression, that's very deliberate. We worked with them from the very start to create a platform um, that was all around the idea of open power and opening power up to areas of the world that had currently no power. We worked solar farms in, the, in South Africa, for example. Um, but also making sure that people felt much more of a, a kind of a closer link to the organization. Um, this is a, a shot of the, the kind of identity in action. That's a Photoshop, but actually we did create um, a series of, again, interventions where people could, could interact with this, um, with this brand. And not just, again, on a, on a kind of superficial level, on a, on a very tangible level about how they could control their billing, how they could um, kind of download information or find out more about what the, what the brand was doing. This gives you a bit of an overview of what it, what it actually looked like. Very dramatic music, you have to remember it was in the Middle East for a launch in, in a huge auditorium.
an identity for an electricity utility company shouldn't necessarily feel like that. And the reason why it should is because the people that are involved in that process were really vibrant, exciting people. They weren't the same people who had been part of the, you know, the big 70s um, corporation. They were people who were incredibly passionate about making sure that the world could have access to much more green power. They were people who were incredibly passionate about making sure that communities in, in the middle of rural Africa could actually have connection to electricity. Really smart, vibrant people. And I think often, um, you know, the, an identity change can, can be seen as something that's done for the outside, but it can also be something that's done for an internal audience and to make an internal audience really, really proud. And the way in which we worked with these guys was great. We, this is a picture of one of the, we had a series of kind of hangers where we got together and just showed them prototypes of potentially what the new experience could feel like. Um, and they were really kind of involved in the, in the discussion and really involved in, in making sure um, that we chose the right thing that was truly representative of what they stood for. Um, that doesn't mean, though, that our role as, as designers is, is kind of lessened. We've got to craft more, we've got to care more, we've got to put more interest into, into what we do. This is something for um, Virgin Media, a large uh, kind of entertainment company in the UK. And the, the thing about this really was we spent nearly three years helping them to create a much more joined up approach across absolutely everything that they did, whereby at the center was based this idea around the, the mark behaving as a, um, as a gesture, as this little gesture form that could tell lots and lots of, of different stories. Um, tremendous amount of craft, tremendous amount of care. Um, as part of the process, we kind of had to rationalize down a lot of what they already had. I think we're finding more and more that what we do is, is often taking away things um, because over the years things have become incredibly cluttered. So whether that's reducing the color palette down, whether that's reducing the amount of fonts and choices, whether that's just applying effort into areas like mo motion and movement, they're actually incredibly important now. Um, that means that what you see often gets reduced down into a very, very simple kind of concentrated form. And then to the point about commentary, often that, that gets commented upon. So this was something that was put across from Reg Fripp from Design Week, um, who suggested that the new version of the expression was much more of a, uh, look like it had been drawn by a nine-year-old. What we liked about that was <laughs> it could. Um, actually, it could be drawn by a four-year-old. And we sent Reg Fripp this back um, just to make a point that the reason why the brand was created like it was and simplified like it was is that literally anyone could draw it. In fact, we, we sent him two things. We sent him something that also showed that literally anyone could draw it. Um, and, and that was incredibly important for us. That I think the way in which you can be really responsive and smart and quick uh, and these things don't have to be long and, and labored approaches. you notice all that I'm really talking about is about capturing people's passions. Uh, I heard the word empathy mentioned earlier as well. It's, it's something that is kind of central to, to what we do. It's not, it's not easy. Um, it's not necessarily something that I think we've mastered how to get that outside, uh, that outside in. Um, I think one of the ways in which we do that is genuinely by going outside. Um, so this is an example of, as part of the work that we did with Virgin, we took over their V Festival. Um, and started just playing with stuff. So we took two sides of the big screens, either side of the stages, and split them into two different um, teams with two different lenses and told two different stories just to kind of, just to test things and play with things. Um, but actually getting out there and getting literally in the field and, and seeing people and interacting with the users helped us understand better how we could create communication that really worked, really worked for people. <laughs>améliorer la manière dont elle fait du business. Dans mon travail, 
le, la manière de recevoir les données et de, et de les traiter de manière la plus efficace et la plus intelligente possible. Dans mon travail, je pense qu'on pourrait utiliser davantage des outils collaboratifs aussi, également. Euh, on, je trouve qu'on néglige trop, des, par exemple, des notions comme les chats internes ou même euh, le télétravail, accessoirement aussi. Sur ce point, j'aurais aimé que cette boîte me permet d'être visible en ligne et de bien pouvoir vendre mes produits. Quelque chose qui est essentiel, euh, essayer de conserver des relations humaines avec nos collaborateurs puisqu'on est envahi par euh, la technologie et euh, on en oublie euh, l'humain. So how can we be essential to our business customers? We have to find ways to get closer to them. Close enough to really listen. Close enough to know what's really important to them. So we can respond with what they need. So we can be useful. So we can be relevant. So we can be an essential part of their success and growth. So what that was was essentially one of our sketchbooks. That's that's how we work. We go out and whether it was in this case out to Senegal, but also out to the streets of Paris and had conversations with people about what that brand could mean for them, how it could be useful for them. And then we took that and we used that directly to structure the brand architecture and also to create the, the visual expression of that. Um, and that's, that's incredibly important to us, just getting out there and, and speaking to people. We nearly run out of time, but I just got one more thing to show you. That's one that's probably, uh, it, it's just something that's really close to my heart and, and something that I really, I really like. We worked with uh, Oliver Elison, who's the, um, an artist, and he did the big sun in the Tate, I don't know if you remember that. Um, and together we created a piece of work which we called Little Sun. And Little Sun was um, there to replace kerosene lamps um, uh, with a, a small um, solar device. Um, and the rationale for that is they're incredibly dangerous, so they're incredibly widespread across, um, across Africa. Um, and the, the purpose of this was twofold. One was to create something that could work as a practical tool out in, in, in Africa when it was dark, but also could work as an art piece that could be sold in the tape. The, the, kind of the money that was made from that was reinvested back in, and then you got this, this virtual circle of, uh, of content. I've got one more video that I'd just like to show you, um, and then we can do some quick questions.
think that is the best piece of branding that we've ever been involved in, that particular slide, um, because we didn't do it, because it was done and taken on by the user uh, and brought to life by them um, and given love and heart and spirit through the way in which they'd interpreted what had been kind of set up in a, in a studio in London. Um, and I think increasingly that's going to be in incredibly important. Um, those are all the things that I've talked about over the last 40 minutes. Um, that last one is still the thing that really resonates and, and is, is the important thing for me. Um, I'm not a subtle man, hence why I wear the T-shirt. Um, but I genuinely believe as much as we, we, we have to think about the process of design and the process of what we do, we have to remember the kind of spirit, the passion behind it. We have to remember the human impact that we, we must kind of make. And we've also got to remember to enjoy it because it's not fucking rocket science. You know, it's, it should be something that is a kind of really enjoyable thing to do. Okay.